forward to your feedback. Um, so yes, I just wanted to say hi. As you can see, my room is full of LinkedIn stuff here. The, we're recording a course on the project Canvas, and hopefully we'll do one on the strategy implementation. So um, yeah, uh, good to see you all, and and thanks for your support. And share the update on the book because it's doing phenomenal, Antonio. Yeah, and whoever, thank you. I know many of you have uh, supported on LinkedIn or the book and uh, uh, the HBR is, is uh, they, they don't, cannot believe the success of this project management implementation community is so strong. We had uh, 10,000, uh, 10,000 was the target for the whole year uh, of book sold. We sold that in three months. Mm -hmm. uh, so they say, what's going on here? How come we've not connected with project management and implementation sooner, right? This is, uh, uh, they've ignored us for so much time. Now they see the benefits. They want to do more right. webinars. So it's, it's great to see what we built here, Robin and I, and all of you, because you are mm -hmm. part of this change, uh, being recognized by, by the strongest brand in, in, in leadership and management. So I think we'll be having more opportunities to do more things with uh, HBR. Um, so I think that's also uh, an opportunity, not just for, for the, this group, but the whole community. So thank you uh, for, <laughs> for everything. I look forward, very excited for this year. Very good. Good morning. Thank, thanks for making the time. Thanks for joining. Uh, good. Let's open it up. Uh, we, we'd like to hear, and we got Antonio with us now, so it's perfect timing. What would be your greater value? Uh, let's just open it to forum. It's a small group. We don't need to call people. Who would like to volunteer to share? Well, uh, thank you, Joe. Robin, you put Joe, Joe, and we had two Joes in the same room. So that was <laughs> Joe, 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 Joe. So, I noticed and, uh, that. <laughs> so no, let's be I, specific. Zoom did he, that. I was just the administrator. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, you know, it, it, ironically, when, you know, I started off by just saying one of the things I was thinking about, and I think what sparked it was your body of knowledge comment coming out. I thought one of the things that I would like to see is if the membership could at least, it doesn't have to be everyone, but over the course of the meetings, if they could gen up a one page, very anonymous uh, client situation, you know, what the project was, what's the industry it was, what were the hurdles and those things. Uh, that they had to do uh, to get the implementation going and that kind of business. And it just gives us a little taste of uh, uh, all the other members' domains. And like I said, it's, it doesn't have to be every month, every month, but one or two or three or something like that. So, so Joe, let me, can I just clarify to, to make sure? So, I mean, you're saying a one page, but the essence of it would be a sharing of what's an implementation practice that you've used that have, what was the challenge and how did you overcome it and what made it work for you? Something like that? Something like that. And, you know, who the, what the, what the industry was, uh, you know, were they profit, nonprofit, government, private, you know, private, uh, for profit, public, uh, you know, what the size of the project was, not dollar amounts, but, you know, population, how much time. Uh, I think those kind of things give everybody a feel for, uh, you know, if they want you to come in and do one special thing, you know, everybody thinks up, okay, but how much, how much time did it take? But now one of you would be putting forth a project that wound up taking like nine months. And, yeah. and so it's a little bit different uh, animal, that type of thing. Yeah, so we can get more group sharing, learning from right. it, and, and share some of the practices that people are using currently. Exactly. Joe W., did you have anything you wanted to add to that? No, oh, that, was, that was it in entirety. Okay. okay. Great. I love the idea. So, you know, and those, we can make it purely voluntarily and we can have a section where people sure. share the best practices. Yep. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Okay. I think that was uh, uh, something Sarah and I are talking about is, is uh, having, having that sort of a, a small short case study, but also somewhere where we can look at the specific nature so we, we could look at digital transformation or or some other uh, aspect maybe per per meeting and then have a have a series of these things around that but so again i think that there's a, a, a you know a sort of a, a 
very short presentation on, on one specific uh, challenge and then to have some feedback, We're very similar, I think, but looking at also from the point of view of what the, the, the content is. Okay, and uh, Chris, can I ask you just to expand a little bit? So, it, you know, for example, if we did, you know, next month's meeting, the theme is digital transformation, what would be a value for you in that discussion? Obviously, it clicks into what Joe just said, lessons learned, but what yeah. else did you discuss that comes to mind that would, you'd want to hear from someone? I think very much along, along those lines. So what, what are the challenges that it's bringing to, to strategy implementation? Uh, and what are the, what are the ad advantages or the opportunities that, that, that it brings as well? But talking about that from, I think, a, a practical aspect. So to my, my feeling would be that exactly as, as Joe was saying, that it'd be a good way to approach it would be to, to, to have a specific uh, case and then be able to talk around talk around that. So I can um, almost I, come, sorry, Chris, go on, I interrupted. Apologies. Yeah, sorry, carry on. No, no, so I was just going to say, it almost says that we can combine the two because you're already doing it yourself. You know, we, we yeah. can pick a theme and then ask someone who's had exposure and experience to share within that theme. Yeah. Or a few people. Awesome. Okay, Shauna, Chris, thank you. And um, so, we didn't, we, we talked more about specific topics, I think, and one of the things that was close to both Neil and my heart was um, not for profit or, or public sector, so that the benefits to it, it to the implement from the, the benefits from the implementation has to be about value for money and, and stakeholders, you said, I like the change from shareholders to stakeholders and uh, providing for our customers. So. I don't know if there's an exploration of what that means. But I very much like the last um, session we had where it talked about agile and bringing benefits right up front. That's the thing because otherwise public sectors, you might have a, you know, a long implementation, a long investment, and you're you're on trust. You're making benefits at the end. So, um, okay. Yeah, Sean, I'm with you 100. percent And you know, I'm just thinking of how, you know, the balance scorecard evolved to having the mission on top rather than the financial. Yeah. Um, and now they've even redone it with a fifth area of sustainability. And if you look yeah. at that from implementation, it's not, that, you know, it's very much looking at the stakeholder value, not the shareholder value in terms yeah. of what are we delivering for, for the nonprofits. And even yeah. that in terms of how we answer that is a question. I like it. Thank you, Shona. Okay. Thanks. And always good to hear the Glasgow accent, but. <laughs> oh, I bet think there's a bit of Aberdeen in there as well, Robin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me, who we've not heard from, Obono and, and Sarah. Ala, any other input? I think I'm, I'm fine. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I think uh, Robin, Please. what they, they yeah, the, what they mentioned before, this is cover our point. You are in our group, group one. We talk about the business cases, uh, the actual business case, not something you know theoretical, practical yeah. business case or success stories that uh, some uh, maybe some uh, enterprise or some com company they implement the the strategy, the strategy implementation institute framework, so we can see the value. Uh, not, uh, you know, uh, something to cover the point and the, the group discussion after the, the business case. So we can uh, share the knowledge between the group and, uh, and the team here. Chokran, I like that. So the fact so that you the, the team right. talk about that. Yeah, also the team talk about the, the KPI, some interested KPI or dashboard yeah. that so we can take some ideas, we can implement in our organization. Yeah, no, thank you for adding in KPIs, definitely. Yeah. And I like the fact you you link it to SIR and we can show how SIR are happening in, in real time with real yeah. examples. Thank you. All right, yeah. Um, one of the other discussions that Tony and I have been thinking about is, you know, with so many of you with ex with specific fields of expertise, would it also be of interest if you know other members share, uh, you know what's going on, you know from their own specific? Uh, I mean, we've talked about sharing, you know, themes around and learnings from challenges. 
but also, you know, um, key, uh, you know, like a mini learning session on a specific subject if somebody wants to cover, would that be of interest or not? So what I'm thinking is, you know, if we talk about value and digital transformation. If we want to talk about how do organizations show, uh, because to measure digital, you need different measures to what we had before. So how do you show that top line growth is greater than bottom line and how do you measure digital transformation and what are companies doing today? Something like that. Yeah, I think, could... I, I think that could be built into, was it the Joe's idea about case study yeah. scenarios, couldn't it? I mean, yeah. I think it's, yeah, yeah, it could be a similar sort of thing. Yeah, I think sometimes a case study can be a specific uh, implementation or challenge, but it could also be a specific topic, if you like. And who wants to volunteer to run next month's meeting so Antonio can have the day off? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Me. All right. Uh, so thank you for your feedback. Uh, you know, Antonio and I very much believe in practicing what we preach and we want to constantly hear from you. So please don't hesitate if you have any other thoughts. Uh, always, you know, how to reach us. So please, you know, email or, or social media, just send us your thoughts and inputs. Uh, this set, yeah, I'm still screen sharing. The second question, and this one we can do as a group discussion. We don't need to go into breakout because we're a smaller group today. 2022, you know, the COVID was very much the catalyst for digital transformation. I've been involved in it since 2014 and up until about 2019, you know, it, it, people were asking me and I was teaching it, but it was really around the awareness and early adopting. Of course, with the, the pandemic, we all know it accelerated, it was the catalyst, but two years in, for example, what we're now seeing in the research we're doing and the clients we're working with is it's getting harder. In the first two years, they addressed the low hanging fruit. They invested in emerging technologies. They reskilled their employees and upskilled them. They adopted new tools such as DevOps, Agile, design thinking, um, pain point analysis, mm. customer mapping. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to mute. Let me just mute. Uh, just give me a second. Okay, yeah, so I just muted everyone. Um, so the biggest challenge, for example, from my perspective that I'm seeing with the organizations I work with is now the rubber is really hitting the road. And to drive the transformation into the company is tough. Why? Because it's not just about transforming your business, it's also about leveraging the new technologies that you're adopting. And both of those together are very, very tough. So one example is the, the continued challenge of you know, succeeding in, in transforming around digital. That's just one example. But let's uh, open it up to the group and please remember to unmute yourself. For your clients or for those who are consulting or for those in the company or for the nonprofit, what do you see as your biggest implementation challenge as we go into 2022? Uh, I don't mind saying mine because I absolutely live and breathe it every day. It's time with, for people. So in my organization, um, you could think of it like a, a major games. It's not a games at all, it, but it's a large temporary project, long term, rather long term than more long term than a games. But it's it's a temporary organization. It started from nothing, and typical of these organizations, they recruit. And I did my masters in this, so it's not just anecdotal. Um, they recruit specialists in their field. So they re recruit construction people and, and technical specialists in the operational field. And they don't uh, appreciate or understand the need for, in, in my old career, of business analysis and that, that sort of cross, cross thinking and, and working things through. So we now have, I, I now have a strategy implementation office, PMO, whatever you want to call it, 
who, who are managing the portfolio, and we have engaged and, and uh, enthusiastic stakeholders who are technical specialists, but bringing those, but they're very busy, extremely busy. They're, they're um, absolutely, we've got legal deadlines, they're running loads of overtime. So trying to get that to come together to design, even in an agile way, which is what we're trying to do, but to, to design the new process and to and to even you know the old fashioned system requirements, just that, that middle bit, the mm. mechanic of getting to the specialist and the capacity and the capability to do that is our biggest challenge. And trying to help us out, what field are you in for the, everyone? I I, I am in, I'm in strategy implementation. Oh, I'm, sorry, I'm, uh, which uh, business? Which, which uh, operation? Um, well, it, it's a very very large infrastructure project, but I'm in one part of it. We we are acquiring acquiring land, and in almost the field doesn't matter. You know, it's because we're trying to implement change, but the um, the yeah the challenge is the capacity and capability of people to to do the bandwidth yeah and and the the skills that business analysis data analysis type of skills to pull it all together because they work in silos i mean that's another thing you find in large temporary organizations because mm. they're specialists they work in their silos so and to, to get job and, yeah and uh, yeah to, to get um so you know, to be specific, even the data was set up in silos. You can't even imagine the data was set up in silos. Mm. So what we call our customers is different in each silo. Our code, our key to our customers. Oh, no way. Yes. Oh, yes. And uh, we've got consultants in and I've asked them for the nuclear option. I said, we may not be able to justify all this big change and, and changing to the to the nuclear option, but I want the golden thread of, of data. I want to see what it would look like and what the change would mean. Large temporary organizations are mad. I mean, I love them because they're challenging and that's what I like to do, but, um, you know, in, in, a, in a customer, in a, 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 sorry to keep on talking, but in, a, no. in an organization where, um, you know, people make orders. You 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 can picture what the data looks like. You know, you've got people, you've got orders, you've got order lines and products and so on. Um, in in this, it's mad, absolutely mad. You can't you can't even draw the data model. And I've been here five years, and I tried it on day on week one because that's how I understand organisations. Mm. <laughs> I'm finally in charge of getting it sorted, and I'm I'm yeah trying to uh, as I say looking for the nuclear option. So we'll see. Well, I, I've got to open, but I want to hear reactions from the others. So please, comments, reactions. Um, I think one, one thing I think I that is that we are fast moving towards a world where nearly everybody is a big temporary organization. Uh, so oh, I, I, I think it's a pretty important uh, challenge to, to look at because we, we are definitely moving that way with the sort of the outcome of things like the gig economy and uh, the, the more rapid pace of change in strategy. Uh, so we're going to do a lot more of that kind of stuff, which is far less um, uh, formal and structured. Uh, and, and yes, I've been through, I have experience of things like similar places where the, the data is uh, designed around what that specific silo needs to use it for and bears very little resemblance uh, in terms of granularity or, or structure naming etc so we've been or been, connectivity to the next silo yes exactly so we worked in a government organization here which served 14 ministries um, and and it was it was interesting but we got it all on a one database eventually yeah and then it started devolving again so <laughs> temporary Shana, would, i think is a good word <laughs> shauna would, would you would you estimate that looking at the individual silos that they're all at the same level of, of digital transformation or are they within each each different silo some are good some are bad some are middle i mean and and, and this is a long lead into saying chunk up the business of getting them on the same digital transformation 
uh, template plan, whatever it is that you're trying to do, and then start bringing them together afterward uh, as a unified group going forward. Are they yeah, well, I, I think you're right. They have been, I think, I mean, I'm, I've only been in post for seven months, so only had the sort of the authority, if you like, to do something about it. They, that's where they have been going. So, so they pretty much are, I think. But the, the challenge is, um, I was unforgivably rude, and I can't get this analogy out of my head now. I said to our team that the, the system that we built is Mr. Potato Head, as if it had been done by a batch of school children. So we've got <laughs> Years, years on the front of the nose and all that sort of stuff because no one's taken a strategic view of the whole thing. Sure, sure. So um, I have, I have to stop saying it because I can't, I, I can't say it again to the people who've actually worked very hard to develop it. So yeah. um, I think that's the danger. I, mean, I, I'm, you know, I started back in the '80s where we designed things properly. And we took months over designing, and so when we actually built it, it actually, you know, all hung together. So I. I, I'm not naturally agile, but I'm really, you know, the last obviously 10 years trying to try to get there. And sure. um, it, by by building the systems, and it's on one integrated platform, one integrated database, by building it as they have, they've now inbuilt these um, different codings for our customers and things like that. So, um, and, and every data relationship is many to many. So. Yeah. I, I'm going to jump in with just a comment okay. because the, the whole issue of silos is something that up until digital was prevalent in so many organization issues, but we have seen it, um, the walls break down and Shona, the, the, the overriding, and this is something I've written about that the difference between previous implementation and what's happening today in digital transformation is previously, you know, we, it almost goes back to the human behavior of hedonism, the, the pain pleasure principle, in that there was no reason for you to, to worry about what happens before and after you hand off on your silo, because yes. the, the organization structure didn't have anything in it that said, so what, you know, and yeah. if you just, you know, came in, did your job and handed off, if something went wrong tomorrow, that wasn't your fault, you had done your job and there was no repercussion, mm -hmm. nothing in the system. What's changed in the last couple of years and how we've broken down the silo is by having that unifying, not uniform, but unifying purpose that has aligned the organization, but has also built in the, the, the reward uh, and recognition structure around the cross-functional operations. And if you don't have that, for me, that fundamental rationale and reason why people should collaborate, then they're always going to compete rather than collaborate. And if they're not penalized or, you know, which stops a behavior or recognized in terms of encouraging specific behaviors, then you, you're, you're just going to keep playing with Mr. Potato Head to use your language. No, I think that's a really, really good point because people, people have an inherent, um, pride in their own silo and their own their own work and you, you have to work very hard to break that down no i agree yeah, yeah that's and that's uh that, that no that's a good reminder to reinforce that yeah and yeah. you know it's I, I call it unifying not uniform so it's not about yeah. everybody <laughs> working the same way it's about having yeah. a greater purpose yeah. that drives everyone towards in alignment yeah like that yeah that's yeah. really good purpose key, key word purpose and leadership. Okay, Sean, thank you. Uh, let's open up. Uh, love to hear from some of the others. Their biggest challenge in 2022. What do you see happening? Joe, what about you for the scorecards? Uh, I've been looking <laughs> at that at the end of last year and the have they officially changed the framework to add in sustainability? Is that official or are they just been? I think they're just being dreaming at the point at the current point. Because um, I did we, try we, to find it if they published on yeah, it, but I couldn't. No, no there's, that's just a lot of discussion that's been going on. Uh, ASPs had some discussions about it, but um, uh, I, I don't, I personally don't think it's going to come to fruition. Uh, Maybe as a customized scorecard, we've had some clients do that, uh, you know, to our better judgment to keep it uniform. 
but I'm I'm in the in the camp that says if they've got in the end of the day, if they've got the right objectives and the right KPIs and the right projects, and they're connected to those, I don't care what kind of uh, structure they put it in because they got to execute that then uh, yeah. from the implementation okay. side. But I think the biggest thing that I'm running into um, so far this year, and I've had already, I think about five client discussions uh, between last week and this week is a lot of personnel changes uh, over the over the holidays. And that's not just the US, it's uh, offshore companies as well. And um, it's uh, in some cases, they said until we get these positions refilled, we're just going to have to go into neutral. And uh, there's not going to be any forward motion uh, going forward. So this whole business that you hear in the news now about the great uh, res resignation uh, uh, movement that's been going on, at least here in the U.S., is now, I think, starting to show up uh, offshore as well. So might be something some of you may have to run in, will run into uh, going forward. Chris, are you seeing it in the Middle East? Because, you know, it's not an issue in Asia. No, I haven't. I haven't. I'm not aware of it at all uh, here. Um, we, we certainly obviously see the reporting of it. <laughs> um, but but I've, I've, I've not really seen that much. And I think the market, the, the, the sort of employment structure is different. So. Yeah. And Al, are you the same? Do you, you see it in, in the Middle East, resignations? Maybe he's not with us. Okay. Yeah, so I'm... Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, Neil, Yeah, ahead. so I'm just having... Uh, interesting, I just recruited a project manager. and and. What I noticed. I hope you made um, him read Antonio's book first. <laughs> <laughs> no, didn't have time for that. Um, what what I found was um, the recruitment took a lot longer um, because there are so many jobs, and I think it's definitely a sort of the employees' market, so to speak. Whereas probably a year ago, it was a different situation. Mm. So I think there is, it, you know, we're, we're finding generally across our organisation that finding people is a lot lot harder at the moment i think people are being you know whether people have, have made decisions to change their lifestyles um i don't know if it's that or if it's just a general change in purpose not sure in the uk so that that was the first thing the other thing i was going to say is my i suppose the challenge that i wonder and consider now we're moving to sort of a more blended working environment is that sort of spontaneity that you get when you're interacting with people in a room you know, you know, Shona just talked about like, you know, massive project. I get, I understand that, but actually, if you, you know, write people in the room, you know, workshops, you may overcome some of the challenges that you've then subsequently experienced later. And I do wonder whether, you know, over the next six months, we'll see a change in work. Well, clearly, we've seen a change in working practice because of obviously the adoption of digital capabilities. But what will that mean in the longer term? Will we look back on this and go, well, do you know what? we didn't do as well as we probably did in 2019 because we haven't got that human interaction. I don't know, just, just a thought. I don't know whether that's fact or if anybody else feels the same, but just a comment. And what industry are you in, Neil? Um, automotive. Um, I work for a not-for-profit research centre in the UK. Yeah. Um, so we, we're, you know, as Shona alluded to, we have stakeholders. Um, yeah, they part fund our, our business through a levy. Um, and the remainder we make up with commercial um, products. So you're kind of a, a split organization, but quite diverse in what we do. Um, so I have a new team that I've built over the last couple of years, which are now starting oh, to implement. Interesting time to have to build the team. So, so again? Interesting time to build the oh, team. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's been quite quite interesting, challenging, but rewarding as well, because I've managed to attract some really good people. So yeah, oh, well uh, yeah, it's good. Thank you. So I don't know if anyone's got reactions to Neil. Yeah, I agree with but the UK market. We've lost a lot of contractors and we're finding it difficult mm. to recruit. A lot of they've got a lot of choice out there. Yeah. So it's a definite shift from employers to employee market going yeah. forward yeah. this year. Yeah. yeah. I, I, Neil, to answer your question directly, I think I don't think we will look back and say we could have done much better. I think digital came, you know, we'll see it as a savior through the pandemic. 
that it gave us that alternative option, you know, that we all, sure. jumped, you know, you just take Zoom as an example, the growth they had 2019, 2020, you know, yeah. as an example. I think, yeah, I mean, obviously there's always things we can improve, um, but, you know. Hmm. No, but I take Neil's point that we do miss the, you know, the kitchen coffee chat. 100%, I wasn't saying, you know, digital is the solution, Sean, no. 100%. Yeah. No, no. I think there'll no, be a quite... massive swing back to conferences. <laughs> People are so desperate. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've already started doing them in Asia and people are just so desperate to network and look at somebody mm. else apart from their, their significant other, you know. Mm. Yeah. You know, last year's research said we talk to chatbots more than we talk to our significant other now, which is scary. <laughs> <laughs> our, our organization's very good on staff surveys and say, you know, why would you want to go back to the office? And everyone just said to socialize. We don't, we don't yeah. want to go back to work. Yeah. We just yeah. want to socialize. See people, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, See you, I need to go. Thank you for being there. Tony, I'll good luck with the recording. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Yeah, we're almost up on time. Any other last minute? We've got about one minute left for any thoughts or inputs. Milvo, you've been very quiet. It's unlike you. How's uh, the view from Brisbane? Share with us. Um, our, our environment's um, quite similar um, in that um, in the Queensland public sector, we're very much constrained um, in terms of um, recruitment. Um, and we've um, found that um, yeah, being able to even find people is difficult. Um, there's just no one, there's no one about, I think it's pot potentially is the, um, um, the lack of, uh, migration, um, into Australia, um, which has caused that, but, um, and not, not, it's not just in our sector, it's, uh, it's across the board. So even in farming, I've heard, um, we just can't get people, um, can't even get people to even har harvest, um, um, fruit and vegetables. Well, yeah. Yep. Yeah, same here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the figure you just reminded me of the figure I heard this morning was that Singapore population has shrunk by 20% wow. over the last two years because oh, expats wow. have left. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. Um, we have last, uh, Casey, I don't know if you got a reaction on that. Well, you've been quiet as well, Casey, today. It's not like you. <laughs> Casey, any, have you seen the shrink in the Singapore market? You're on yeah. mute, Casey. You can hear. Okay, no worries. Um, uh, we, we can, I, just... can I can I comment? Can oh, I no, make please, it? please do. Yeah, sorry. No. I think hello everyone. I think I'm I'm working for for a group of for a group company. Uh, the parent company is a union, and then uh, there is a an investment company, and. I'm working under the, the, the insurance company. So the parent is the, 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 the union. And then there's an investment company that is doing micro lending. And then uh, I'm on the insurance company. This is due to uh, compliance issues. And then uh, when you develop a, a strategy, then you have to align it to the parent. You have to take the strategy from the parent and then align it to the to the mother, to the to this firstborn, and then I think we are the third born. And then what, what is going to happen here? I see the challenge is time now. Because sometimes you need to spend more time in developing that strategy because you have to learn the strategy from the parent and the we are a subsidiary now from the parent, the parent, the grandparent, and then the parent, and then us. So one of the things that I see. The challenge is that because we are from different uh, industries, industries from the insurance industry, so we have to look at the the strategy from the parent. Oh, sorry, we have to take the strategy. We have to align the strategy from the parent and the grandparent. So that is going to take a lot of time. And the other thing is that we are from different uh, industries. How are you going? You have to take time to also make sure that you align your strategy in terms of the key key PIs. And then the other issue will also be the cascading of the strategy to the, to the lower class or to so the subordinate. Sorry, I, sorry. Not... Go on, please, last yes. comment, then I'm gonna to have to wrap up the meeting. Go on, one more comment. Okay, so I think the time, time here is one of the things that I see 
that we are going to face because we need to spend more time in terms of developing the strategy and then implementing it and then cascading it to our to our members. So are you, I don't know if you've had the opportunity to study the higher group out of China, but they are oh, really okay. one of the global best practices that the world is studying these days. You know, in the past it would be a Sony or a GE, and then it was people like maybe Citigroup or Microsoft. Now it's higher. Why? Their model is they have 400 micro enterprises where they don't have that issue of alignment to the grand company, the, the smaller business, you know, that whole cascading alignment they do through micro enterprises and they've really shaken up uh, the thinking around that. So that might be someone you want to have a look at. I, I'm very conscious of the time and we are the implementation institute. So I'm going to mm. wrap it up in the next 10 seconds. Okay. Um, one, uh, one thing I just watched recently that if you haven't seen is absolutely fascinating on you can watch it on youtube is the national geographic study on how pfizer created the uh, vaccine mm. how they from an implementation perspective they shook up the model you know instead of working sequentially they they challenged that they they changed you know so many of the rules uh, of how manufacturing and man pharmaceutical and the research come together it's a phenomenal one hour, um, very well. And it's, you know, i got Albert, the CEO of Pfizer, very much involved in it. Wonderful um, uh, one hour viewing. You can watch it very easily on YouTube. Um, there's, I'm actually working with Novartis next week. So I'm going to use some of it in the session I'm doing with Novartis. Uh, so well worth it. That's going to be my, uh, you know, Christmas uh, bonus. Uh, thank you to everyone for joining yeah. today. Uh, next month's meeting um, is, is scheduled for February the 1st, 2 p.m. Central European time. Uh, Casey and I will be celebrating Chinese New Year because yes. uh, my wife is local. So, Gong Si Fa Choi to Casey and I will be yeah. uh, for New Year. So, we won't be at the meeting, but to everyone else uh, who's not celebrating Chinese New Year, uh, February the 1st, 2 p.m. Central European time. Thank you for everyone for making today. Have a wonderful start to the new year and look forward to speaking to you on social media over the next few weeks. Keep safe, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.